You ready? Here we go. Good morning, everyone. On today's show, we are in the home stretch. We're almost there, ready to hit our streak goal for the week. We'll talk all about that because we have a little bit of an adjustment to the reward for tomorrow. K sera sera, right? In addition to that, we've got some updates on current topics and playthroughs going on. Uh, and today we will watch live the Dragon Age Veilguard final trailer, which just dropped. And I'm curious what everyone will think. We're still on the fence about if I should check this out. Maybe this trailer will be the defining moment for the game to make that determination. All of this and more on this Thursday's lovely Halloween episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Alrighty, good morning everyone and welcome to the show. Today is Thursday, the 24th of October 2024, or as we probably should call it, the calm before the storm, right? The final day of kind of filler horror content before big new releases start coming out pretty much constantly uh, for the next several weeks. Plus, of course, my Halloween marathon uh, coming up next week in exactly one week. That is right. It is one week until Halloween when I will be doing a day-long marathon of fun here on DSP Gaming. Whether it'll be on YouTube or Kick is your choice. But I'm very excited for that, and we're going to be talking about that in a moment. But, man, what a week it's been so far. A six-day streaming week for me. This is day five. Uh, great stuff in store for all of you here today, including... The continuation of A Quiet Place, The Road Ahead, a game that we started yesterday on a whim. We basically needed some filler content. We weren't sure exactly what to do. And as we started playing it, we realized, wow, this game is actually quite good uh, in regards to like a horror-themed game for this time of year, especially for the price that they charge for. It's not like some over-the-top expensive game. Um, and tonight on the late stream, I made a, a spur-of-the-moment decision. What I want to do tonight is I want to try out Dead by Daylight. This is a game that I have played various times over the years. Originally, I played Dead by Daylight when it had released on the Xbox One many, many years ago. Um, I was intrigued by it and actually really liked it. But I actually played it a, a quite a bit, and my audience had actually told me they got bored of it to stop playing it as often. So I did. And then I came back to it from time to time periodically. Uh, sometimes I would play it around the Halloween season, and other times it would just be random if someone asked. Um, now, since it is the build-up to Halloween, only a week left, and since we have a random night stream that's kind of open, I'm just not feeling fighting games right now. You know, we had played them for quite some bit over the last several months, and I just played Street Fighter Six back on Monday or Tuesday, and it didn't get much attention, so I'm like, eh, let's just do something Halloween-themed tonight, something different, right? So we'll see how that goes tonight. I also, also have never played Dead by Daylight on PC, and I'm curious how it performs, because apparently the game was designed for PC, correct? Um, so to play it on there and to see how it performs on my gaming PC now should be pretty interesting. Uh, so I'm excited. Today should be a great day of horror-themed Halloween fun, which is obviously appropriate for the season. Um, but we have a few things to talk about and get caught up with. First off, one of the things that I'm definitely starting to notice now that I've been co-streaming, um, is that sadly it's not as easy to just ad adjust stuff on the fly and fix things that go wrong. And allow me to explain what I mean by that. So, I'm playing this game A Quiet Place, right? And I'm on kick, and I'm trying to set up the kick stream to say we're going to be playing A Quiet Place The Road Ahead. So I'm in my creator dashboard on Kick, and I'm setting up the stream, and I put the title and everything, and then they allow you to select the category. And the category is supposed to be either the title of a game or 
You could put on there, you're just chatting. You could put on there, oh, we're doing like a watch along party. Like all these, these categories are all available. There's no category for a quiet place. Just not listed. And it's weird because every game that I've played on Kick in the last week has been listed, just not this one. So yesterday, I set up the stream to just say just chatting because I figured we'll start the stream off like that for the podcast. Someone tells me, oh, are you aware that it changed to say a quiet place during your, your stream? I was like, no, how did that happen? So this morning I'm setting it up and I'm like, this is disappointing. I don't know how it got fixed or changed. Maybe it was a moderator that did it or something. And then it was a uh, void who in the chat, he goes, oh, so what you do is you have to type the co category command and then you could do it manually from there. So I go to test it. And yeah, if I do a category command in the chat, then a quiet place comes up as an option. But it doesn't come up as an option if you're trying to set it outside of there in the screen where you're supposed to do stream setup. Why not? But also, you can't change the category unless you're live. So I had to wait to go live, and then I could change the category to say a quiet place. What the heck? Now, also with co-streaming, if anything goes wrong with the setup, I can't stop a stream once I've started it and restart it. Once you stop a stream, it just shuts down the stream. And the stream has to be recreated from scratch. And that's frustrating. That happened this morning. So all the streams are set up, ready to go. I hit broadcast. It starts broadcasting to the YouTube side. I don't do it simultaneously because if I do, it craps out. You have to do to one and then start the other. But you have to get the one established first. So I start broadcasting to the YouTube side. I'm like, okay. Okay, it's a smooth connection to the YouTube side. All right, let me play the music. And then I'll start going on the kick side. I hit play on the music. Endless loading screen. Wait, what? I go to play a video. Endless loading screen. Oh, no. This is a technical issue that I have on my old-ass streaming PC. Every once in a while, there's some weird glitch that happens that no audio or video file will play. The only way to fix it, restart the PC. So I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? Let me hit restart. So I restart the PC. Boot everything back up. Oh, your YouTube stream ended. Got to start a whole new one. But I had like 40, 50 people in there watching, waiting. And now they're just in limbo. Where are they? Too bad. Got to start a whole new one over. So I had to completely start the thing from scratch now. Now I got a dead stream that says it had like 50 viewers. You know, frustrating. But that's the thing. Like, I think these are, these are, these are things that I'm going to get more used to and, and understand better the more I do this. I've only been doing the co-streaming for about a week and a half. And by the way, it's been very successful. Um, you know, having... Uh, uh, two different audiences, but two different chats to talk to is kind of cool, actually. I like how one chat has a lot of animation, and the other chat is kind of the regular crew who's been around for a while, and I can go back and forth, and the support has been great. I have no complaints about, you know, support with the co-streaming. It's been quite good. So, thank you all for that, and uh, I mean, yeah, look, it definitely has worked, right? I mean, holy crap, I've been doing it for a week and a half, and boom, we've been hitting the goals every single stream, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you guys for that. So what I'd like to briefly do is recap how yesterday went, talk a little bit about A Quiet Place as a game and a little bit about how our WWE champions went. <laughs> and then I want to talk about the schedule for the week. Um particularly tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to be a very hype day. Like, I'm very excited for tomorrow, for sure. Um, but also some stuff going on today, okay? So let, let's get into it. So yesterday, <clears throat> I played A Quiet Place the Road Ahead. 30 bucks. Not an expensive game. It's essentially like a half-price discount game. So they know with this game, they didn't, you know, recreate genius or anything. It's not an innovative game. But for what it is, it's a game that's a sneaking survival game set in the world of A Quiet Place, uh, you know, the movie series. Not bad. It's got an interesting story following a cast of characters and their experiences going through life as essentially Earth got invaded by these alien creatures um, and how, what they have to do to survive, how they can't talk, they have to write everything, you know. It's kind of an interesting take, for sure. And I mean, I enjoyed the game. I thought the graphics were all right. But... The gameplay is kind of hit or miss. You know, sometimes you're sneaking around. It's kind of tense. Other times it's just kind of annoying. Um, but you got to be ultra careful with how much sound you make. And it really is just a walking simulator, except you're walking around a monster that wants to rip you limb from limb. 
and you can't get detected by it or you instantly die. Like there is no way to fight this thing. You just have to not get ever get seen or detected. And I say seen, but they're blind. You don't, you know, you can't get heard is what it is. So I'd say for what it is so far, I actually like it. It's got this mechanic where it's flashing to right before when this thing started and how it started versus now, right? So I am enjoying myself. I think that it's a good game so far. You know, for a $30 game, I'm not going to complain. It's a half price experience and it's fun. We had a good time. It was tense yesterday. We were interacting and talking while I was playing it. And here's the thing. The game has a um, mechanic where if you had a microphone on, okay, a microphone activated with your PC, if you make noise, then the thing hears you and comes and kills you. It's called what, a death angel, all right? And people are like, you should have the mic on for that. And I'm like, that's the dumbest request ever. Like, I get it that you want to see the game in action in that regard, but I'm a streamer. I'm not sitting here by myself playing the game for myself. I'm a streamer who's trying to entertain a live audience, right? Of hundreds. I need to talk with you. If I sit here with my lips zipped, what is the entertainment factor of the stream? There would be none, <laughs> right? I'm playing silent, silent streamer. So that's not fun. You want me to talk with you, answer questions, do shout outs? I mean, I was singing and having fun with the audience yesterday. It was a good time. If you play with your mouth shut, that's stupid. And Raul Doran says, well, plenty of streamers did it to DSP. That's stupid. I don't care what plenty of streamers did. I'm not stupid. I'm trying to entertain an audience. I can't entertain you with my mouth closed. All right? Just a, let's do a silent radio show today, everyone. Everyone, just, What? No. That's stupid. All right? So anyway, I get it. If you're playing by, by yourself, and this is a creepy, unique aspect of the game, great. Try it out. If you're streaming, that's dumb. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to more. Apparently, the game people are saying is seven to eight hours long. We're about three hours in. We'll see how far we get today. If it's not true and we beat it today, I don't mind. It's not a big deal if we do defeat it today. But if we don't, hey, we'll have to schedule in like a night stream moving forward, maybe the next week to try to finish it up. Okay. Now, tonight on the late stream, Dead by Daylight. I I'm actually very excited to see how Dead by Daylight plays on PC. Particularly when I play Dead by Daylight, I like being a survivor more. But tonight, maybe I'll actually try to actively be the, the killers. Now, keep in mind, I haven't played this game in years, so I'm going to suck. So it may be a very easy way uh, for these survivors to survive if I am the killer, because I'm not going to know what I'm doing. But I think it'll be a fun kind of one-off night experience to have fun with a game like this, and I hope that you guys will join me for that tonight. Now, while that is going on, today I have something personal going on that is, may or may not affect the streams, okay? Allow me to explain. Today I'm having a brand new washer and dryer delivered and installed in my home. My current washer-dryer combo was here when I moved in in the summer of 2014. At that point, I think it was new. You know, you don't know. It seemed new. Um... And over the last several years, they've started to break down. The washer particularly has issues where it keeps saying uneven load and, and erroring out. We've noticed over the last year, all of a sudden, our clothes are starting to get little holes in them. Like, oh, shit, this thing is busted, right? You know, we got to get a new one. And it even says appliances these days have a 10-year warranty max. Like, they're expected to last about 10 years, and then they break down. So because of you and all of the support that you have given me, the increased support on streams and on videos, I can actually afford to get a new washer dryer because let me tell you, it ain't cheap. Even the cheapest ones are expensive, all right? So we got it being delivered today and it's a washer dryer separate, you know, units. We didn't get a combo unit. We got separate units because our washroom uh, for this is quite large. There's lots of room in it. Last night, my wife and I pulled out both the washer dryer and cleaned the entire room. We scrubbed it. We mopped it. Cleaned it all out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the new ones are being delivered today. They're going to disconnect and haul away the old ones. They're going to bring in the new ones, completely hook them up with the, you know, the hoses and all the electricity and the duct and everything it needs. They're, I paid them all to do it. So here's the thing. Okay, I got my delivery window for when this is coming today. And I have actually have the delivery page open here. And I'm going to keep reviewing this all day. So currently it's 1140 a.m. My time. 
they're supposed to be delivering this anytime after 2.30 p.m. They're not guaranteeing a time because they have all these other deliveries they're doing today, and I keep tracking it, and it says they actually are six stops away right now. So FYI, when they're delivering this stuff, on average, you have to think, it probably takes about 20 minutes to a half an hour because they have to disconnect and haul away the old units, bring in the new units, hook them up, and then test them before they can leave. That's probably about 20 to 30 minutes of work, but then they have to drive between the sites as well. So because of that, that's why in six stops, it's going to take several hours, right? They may show up here, like, literally at 2.30. They may be here at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, and if that's the case, that's going to interrupt the, the uh, Quiet Place stream, all right? If it does, well, there's nothing I could do. I'll, I'll put it on break. We'll jump over and play some clips to entertain you guys while it's being delivered or anything there, right? There you go. Um, now, they may not show up during the stream. It may very well be that one of these deliveries that they're doing today, that there's traffic, that there's an issue hauling away or hooking up the new units. So there's no way to really tell how long it'll take them to do this. Um, but we'll find out. We'll find out live today as we hang out together. And uh, if it happens on stream, I'll let you know what I'm doing. I'm tracking it actively here to see, you know, when they're actually going to show up. So that way I can make sure that they're able to get in the gate and everything. Uh, but I'll have to keep on top of that and keep checking it regularly to see where they are in order and stuff like that, okay? Um, so, we'll see what happens, but that's happening today. Uh, may affect the first stream, may not. If it doesn't, well then, you know what? We'll just do it between the streams, right? Like, we'll just, it'll, it'll be delivered. It won't affect anything, but it may. It may actually have, I mean, if they do show up, likely it's going to be like a half an hour where I have to be down there with them while this thing gets delivered and everything. So it's going to be, you know, me being distracted a little bit and have clips playing, then I'll come back when it's when it's done and let you know how it went, okay? So there you go. Um, So that's happening today. FYI, there is a washer emo on kick. Thank you to Void. Void has been making these emotes for us daily, all right, which is cool of him to do that. That's really nice of him to do this kind of on-the-fly stuff. So thank you very much, Void, for the washer emo. You guys can use it all day, and if I get interrupted, you know what emo you can use, right? Um, Cool. Now, I want to start talking about tomorrow, because tomorrow's a big day, but before I do, Game Ticker did our first contribution of the day, which is a two euro super chat, and says, who's your favorite video game villain and why? Uh, I don't know if I have an overall favorite villain. Uh, you know, some of the villains that stand out in my mind would be Kefka from Final Fantasy VI, for sure, because he was such a weirdo character at the time. I never really encountered, like, an evil... Uh, like a jester-like character that later on ends up being the big bad of the second half of the game. It kind of blew me away. Um, you know, how about in Chrono Trigger? Lavos, right? Or or Magus, or both, right? Because they both seem like the big bad of the game, but then, you know, you get these twists and turns in the plot, right? Um, and Bison, the ultimate final baddie of Street Fighter. To this day, he's still known as kind of like the final boss of fighting games. Right? So I could stand here and I could talk about all kinds of epic villains from over gaming's history. So thank you, Game Ticker, for the first contribution of the day. Now, today, folks, we are at goal number 33. The streak continues, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have been so supportive and amazing, and I really appreciate you all for doing that and supporting me and my content. Okay? If you could, let's keep that momentum going today. We are literally three streams away from the big reward tomorrow, which we have to talk about because we do have to minorly adjust it. When I say minorly, I mean we're still going to do exactly the same thing, except we're just going to order something different, and I'll explain it in a moment. But, um, yeah, like, this is so awesome. Thank you all for supporting me. 33 straight streams. Today, let's make it 34 and 35, all right? So, how does it work? Support the stream by a super chat, a super sticker, a tip a sub, or a gifted sub, all of those things help, all right? Particularly if you're doing subs over on Kick, if you become a paid sub today, you join the VIP, excuse me, you join the uh, Founders Club. Only 50 more people can ever do that. It's the first 100 people to legitimately pay and subscribe to a channel. That's a club of people that get a number one badge in the chat. And if you are one of the founders over on Kick, you absolutely should be showing off that badge because you're only one of 100 people that will ever have it. Okay, so that's awesome. If you gift 25 subs 
or more over on Kick, I'm going to put you into the VIP club. This is a special club where you get a crown emote that's unique to anyone. You'll only get it if you have 25 gifted subs and only 100 people can get that. Currently, I think we have six or seven people who've done it. So we still have like 90 some people who can earn that distinction. Okay. So these are great ways to support over on Kick. Please do. And thank you because people have been very generous on Kick recently with that. I appreciate that. On the YouTube side of things, Super Chats and Super Stickers are a great way to contribute. You get a pop-up for it. I can't do pop-ups for Kick because Kick doesn't have integration into any kind of a system, but YouTube does. Take a look. We just got one right there. And, uh, you know, you'll get recognition not only in there, but I'll shout you out as well. I'll add you to the leaderboard, particularly right now. Sybil, with a $2 Super Chat, says, Do you watch MMA? Would you ever train in MMA? I do not watch MMA. I watched MMA back in the day uh, when it was UFC in the 90s. When you had sumo wrestlers fighting kickboxers, right? When you had Royce Gracie slamming everyone around and no one could beat him. That's when I was watching MMA. But I have not been watching MMA actively in a million years, no. Um, but yeah, that's the way you could contribute via YouTube. Now, another great way to contribute, tipping. If you can use PayPal, you can tip me. And that's direct, and that doesn't involve Kick nor YouTube. I know some people have particular issues with certain sites and businesses. Well, PayPal is the way to, to kind of circumvent that. You could tip me via PayPal by, if you're on YouTube, typing exclamation point tip in the chat. It'll give you a link. If you're on Kick or YouTube, if you look at the description of either stream, you'll have a link for it. Or if you're on uh, Kick, you can also check out my About panels. And it's the first panel there should be the thing to tip me, okay? So... Thank you guys so much for any support today. Real, let's hit the goal again. All right, let's hit those goals and crush those trolls as always. Now, if we hit the goal today, tonight, and tomorrow's daytime stream, we got a big reward in store on Friday. The reward is that I'm going to be ordering food from Firehouse Subs to be delivered for another episode of DSP Tries It. This will be three weeks in a row that we hit the goals and we're doing a special DSP Tries It. Now, originally. We had the idea that I was going to try some of their new subs. For example, to show you here, okay. They have two new subs. A Thanksgiving turkey sub, which is supposed to simulate an American Thanksgiving dinner. They even have this other one, the Firehouse Captain Club. But guess what? Those aren't on delivery apps. You can't get those via delivery apps, which is bullshit. Like, that actually angers me. It does, okay? They should have everything available for delivery. They don't. And in fact, I even checked. And I said, oh, maybe I can build my own sub to be similar to those two. You can't. The build your own sub only lets you do turkey, ham, roast beef, corned beef, and like veggie. That's it. They don't let you build from scratch. So it angers me because I did want to try these new subs. And I can't. However, I've only ordered food from Firehouse Subs like twice ever. And taking a look at their menu, I think uh, it would be considered, was it hot or cold? I think I always got a cold sub from them. No, I guess not. I'm trying to think what I've gotten from them. Um, I, okay, I definitely got the club on a sub. I'm sure I got this one. Because that sounds very familiar. And I remember it's good because not only does it have delicious meat, but it has this sweetness to it because they put like this sweet honey mustard on it. That's really, really good. Um, but that's it. I think all I've ever had was that. And I want to say like ages ago, I ordered some kind of a chicken. But I, it wasn't this one. It, what's weird is it's not on the menu anymore. So it must be someone, something they got rid of. I remember them having like a chicken, but it was like chicken with lettuce and tomato. Like it was healthy. Like it didn't have any, like, unhealthy shit on it, right? So, um, what I think I'm going to do tomorrow, all right, if we hit the goals today, which is this stream and tonight's stream, and we hit the stream tomorrow, what I will do is I will order two different subs from them. Now, obviously, it has to be one of their standard subs. These are the only ones that are going to be on the delivery menu, all right? But I think I'll probably buy, like, two smalls, Rather than, I don't want to get a medium and a large. I'll probably buy like two small subs um, 
And that way I can do like a dual taste test. So that way it's not just one. Some people are really strongly suggesting the engineer. Smoked turkey breast with melted Swiss savory mushrooms served with lettuce, tomato, onion, mayo, and a deli mustard and a dill pickle. That sounds pretty good. So it's turkey with, with Swiss and mushrooms. Yeah, that does sound pretty good. All right. Maybe I'll get that. Right? But I think that I'll, I'll probably get that and maybe another one too. And I'll order two smalls. And that way we could do a dual taste testing for you guys. I've only done firehouse subs once ever. And it was feasting with the king like ages ago. So maybe do a head-to-head -head DSP tries it tasting test. You know, which is better out of these two. I don't know what else I should get. I've never had their roast beef. I've never had their brisket. You know, I've never had their corned beef. I never had any of these. So I don't know what one I should try. But again, sadly, I can't get anything that says new. They don't offer that on the app. It has to be like an established sandwich, okay? So that's going to be tomorrow if we hit our goals, all right? Now, considering the fact we just had 33 straight streams where we hit the goals, I can't imagine that we're not going to do it today. You know, I, why wouldn't we, right? You would think we absolutely would. Um, by the way, tomorrow, a very big day. Why? Tomorrow is both the release of Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and the release of Sonic X Shadow Generations. So a double new release day. And if you remember, what I offered is that we can do wagers for the first time in many years because now I'm streaming on Kick. So what is a wager? A wager is, for example, someone on Kick says, hey, Phil. I challenge you to get 15 kills in this match. And if you do, I'm going to gift you a sub after the match ends. Or, hey, Phil, I challenge you to play this entire match with just the pistol. And if you get top three with just the pistol, I'm going to give five subs to your community. All right? But the thing is, I have to hit the criteria. If I don't hit the criteria, I don't get the reward. All right? We used to do this. Years ago, we used to do these in Warzone. We used to do this in Standard Multiplayer. And it was very challenging. Okay? It was. But the thing is, my detractors, as you know, are unhinged psychopaths. And in their minds, they were saying, this is against YouTube Terms of Service. Okay? Is it against YouTube Terms of Service? No, it's not. I looked into it. It's not against YouTube Terms of Service. They're full of shit. They made it up. But you know my trolls. They're such morons that they would probably mass spam, mass flag, mass misreport me. And quite frankly, I just didn't want to mess around with it, all right? And I said, it's not worth my time. But here's the thing, okay? Guess what? Now I'm co-streaming on YouTube and on Kick. okay? My hope is that because tomorrow I'll be playing a hot new game on Kick, that I will actually get some decent viewership. Now, I don't know how many I'll get. I mean, it would be nice to get 100 viewers on Kick, uh, maybe. I don't know, you know, but if I can get a good crowd on kick watching me and then we could do these, these challenges, these wagers, so to speak, um, I think that would be great. Okay. So let's see how it goes. And, uh, hopefully this would go well, right? I really do. Hopefully this would go well and people would, would be up to the challenge. All right. I mean, like, yes, let's do it. Let's challenge Phil and we'll reward him if he hits it. This is very exciting. It makes it Way more interesting than just, oh, Phil's just playing multiplayer. It does. Like, I remember back in the days, it was super duper fun. It really was very exciting um, to do these challenges. So let's do it, right? Let's see how it goes tomorrow. Hopefully it goes really well. Hopefully we'll have a great time with it, you know, and we'll go from there, all right? But I'm very excited for the premiere. It's going to be all multiplayer in Call of Duty tomorrow, okay? 100% multiplayer, uh, trying the new maps. Trying to unlock guns. Because that's the thing. When you start in Call of Duty, you have to unlock the guns first. Which is very, very annoying that you have to do that. But the first few streams are going to be me just going through those motions to try to unlock stuff. Okay? So, that's tomorrow's daytime stream. I can't imagine with the pr pr premiere of Call of Duty, right? And me having these kind of fun bounties to do. Or, or rewards or wagers. Whatever you want to call them. I can't imagine that we're not going to get a good crowd and it's not we're not going to hit the goal tomorrow, right? And then after that, we'll have to think about what's the next week. But here's the thing. Next week is Halloween, right? So we got to think about what we want to do 
uh, for Halloween week, perhaps. I don't know. It should be pretty cool. It should be pretty exciting. Now, tomorrow night, with uh, Sonic Cross Shadow Generations, uh, I'm excited to see how that goes as well. Um, I don't know much about the game. I've never played the Shadow of the Hedgehog games. I've only played the uh, Shadow segments of various games. For example, Sonic Adventure 2 or Sonic 06. But I never played his own standalone game or games. I don't even know how many there were. Uh, so, that should be fun. A whole new release day tomorrow should be very exciting. Okay, and I hope that you guys will join me for that. It should be a good time. Uh, I'm off from streaming on Saturday. When I come back on Sunday, it'll be more Call of Duty and more Sonic X Shadow Generations. Monday will then be the full day of reacting. And uh, I'm excited for that. Because, you know, it's the last three uh, uh, sessions of DSP versus the Internet, the clip show. After that, we're retiring the show so that I can introduce a new, more long-form show uh, of clip reacting, which may be, you know, anything from 15 to 30-minute long videos, or it could be a documentary if we, like, plan it ahead of time. Um, and that's going to probably start uh, probably around uh, December-ish. I think what we'll do is take a, a couple weeks to plan out what we want to do with that. And figure out the criteria. For example, I'm getting great suggestions. Uh, Overpowered Boone actually posted up a bunch of suggestions on how to make the show work. Uh, sadly, I didn't have that. I have it on my desktop, but I didn't put it onto this co computer so we could read it today. But it's something that I want to explore uh, as we get closer to the release of this new show that I'll probably start in December. Okay, so we'll talk more about that as we get closer to it. Obviously, I'm excited for it, but this coming week. Will be a balance between Call of Duty and Sonic X Shadow Generations. If we don't finish A Quiet Place today, I would like to throw that in there to finish it up probably a night stream of two hours. There will still be some WWE champions going on in there, okay? So there's going to be a good amount of stuff going on uh, over the course of the next week. <clears throat> new release stuff. Keep in mind, we've got the new Life is Strange game coming out. And then on Halloween, we've got my Halloween marathon. So one week from today... Right here, all day long, I'll be in costume. I'll be playing a variety of Halloween-themed games that you guys nominated and are currently voting on. For those who don't remember, <clears throat> these are the games that we're looking at for Halloween. Dino Crisis, which it looks like I'm going to get a PS Plus subscription to play. Inscription, on PC, it's, that's on Game Pass. Uh, the Retro Realms Double Feature, I'll probably just buy one of them because there's either Halloween or Evil Dead. I'll probably buy Halloween and play as Michael Myers. Fear 1, which is available on GOG. I'm excited for that. And uh, Fears to Fathom, which also, I believe, um, has, like, multiple different versions on Steam. But we'll have to pick out, like, the right one and figure out what, we, what one we want to do, okay? <clears throat> In addition to that, I'm going to have Dead by Daylight. In fact, I'm going to get it. I think people are saying it's on Game Pass. So that's how I'm going to get it for tonight, Dead by Daylight. Um, and we'll have that. So, this should be fun. This should be a fun time. All day long playing horror-themed games. And we'll have Dead by Daylight just to interject as well if we have time for it on Halloween. So, it should be good stuff. And I'll also be having some food that day. I'll probably be drinking some booze. Someone just asked, Zombie Undertaker Dupe says, Will there be drinks or shot goals for Halloween? Not necessarily goals, but what I might do is have some booze here. And for every certain amount of support that I get, like let's say every 100 bucks that I raise on stream that day, I'll take a shot. Right? Something like that. So we'll see. We'll see how that how that goes. But uh, yeah, that should be a very fun day. And that's exactly one week from today. And I'll have my costume that I was supposed to have last year. And ended up not having because I caught COVID and had to cancel the whole marathon. I'll be in that costume all day long. It should be very fun. In my opinion, it's one of the best costumes I've ever had. And now finally, I'll have a pure HD camera, 60 frames. I'm going to look great in the costume. Previous years, I always had the crappy webcam quality and everything, but now this year is going to be very different, okay? It should be fun. So, that's coming up next week. I hope you guys are excited for that, and you're going to be here for that. Again, I'll be co-streaming it on YouTube and Kick, right? Good stuff. Okay. Um. So, outside of all of that, right, Uh, I'm just having a good time right now. I'm enjoying all the stuff that we're doing together. I really am. I'm having, a, you know, a great time with gaming, with life. However, I'm going to say this. For some weird reason, YouTube has been having issues recently. It's very hard for me to get views on YouTube right now when it comes to, like, on-demand viewership for the videos. And I really don't know why or what's going on. 
I don't know if my channel has once again been thrown to the bottom of the pack and is, isn't showing up anymore in the YouTube algorithm, honestly. You know, when I started playing WWE Champions a month and a half, two months ago, I was getting thousands of views a video. Now, I'm getting, no exaggeration, like 100 views a video. It's the same content. We're pulling, we're getting characters, which is what people wanted. So what happened? Right? I don't know. You know, I'm playing A Quiet Place is a great Halloween themed game. And I know that it kind of, uh, I know that it kind of, uh, came out of thin air, came out of left field. No one was really expecting that A Quiet Place was going to be a game that I played right now. But it just ended up being in the schedule for fun. You know, we actually needed something to do, right? And so I'm playing it. Yesterday, we did all right on stream. It wasn't like we had, you know, a lower attendance on stream or whatever. The videos have been done very poorly on demand on YouTube. And I don't know why. But the thing is, I'm not beholden to that. I want you guys to understand something, okay? I'm not beholden to YouTube views anymore. I very much am an interactive live streamer. And... The back-end support that I get from, for example, ad revenue on YouTube is nice, but it's definitely not the majority of what I make, okay? The most, most of my income very much comes from these live streams. So as long as this keeps getting hit and this keeps getting hit, the fact that for some reason my viewership is down on YouTube, it, it won't really affect me that badly, maybe a little bit, but this is the main focus. This is what's most important, okay? Um, but yeah, you got to wonder what happened. What, why are my videos getting nearly no views these days? I don't know. I can't really answer that, you know? Will there be an increase in views starting tomorrow with the new releases? Will Call of Duty and Sonic X Shadow bring an increase in views? Will Life is Strange bring an increase in views? Will my Halloween Marathon bring an increase in views? Will the new games that come out after that bring an increase in view? I don't know. At this point, I don't even care anymore. I'll be honest with you guys. like, Because that's the thing. There's some content creators that are so beholden to the view. And if something goes wrong, they take a big hit in the pocketbook. Like, for example, any of these YouTubers who do, like, one major video every few weeks, and it's a big, lengthy video, whether it's one of these video essays or a documentary or whatever it may be, <clears throat> um... Those can definitely affect them. For example, let's look what happened with June the King. This, I, I got to be honest with you guys about this whole thing with June the King and my documentary. He got completely screwed. All right, what do I mean by that? He releases my documentary. I hype it up. My detractors hype it up. Everyone hypes this goddamn thing up, right? <clears throat> I purposely don't react to it all right away because I want to do it slowly so that his video can get views. If I react to it all right away, he gets less views, right? So I purposefully did it slowly, right? My, my documentary did great for him. <clears throat> he got over 700,000 views within week one, and it was trending to hit over a million views. You know what happened? Within one day, WWE claimed his entire video. He had, I'm not shitting you. Like five seconds of WWE footage in it, which is a clip which is allowed by fair use. Okay? They claimed his whole fucking documentary and said they owned the rights to it and he had no right to advertise on the video. <clears throat> because he had five seconds of WWE footage in it. And it blocked that, that documentary into certain countries. Certain countries couldn't even view it. And it still had 700,000 views within a week, right? <clears throat> so what ended up happening was he disputed it and they wouldn't release it. Like WWE just refused to release their claim even though it was complete bullshit, right? So he's, he's like, what I have to do, sadly, the only way I can make money on this giant piece of work, it's his biggest documentary ever, four hours of work, right? He had to actually hide the original video and republish it with the WWE footage edited out. It killed the video. So now his second upload only has like 200,000 views. And he never got paid for the first 700,000 views. So from what I'm to understand, I haven't talked to him personally. So if I'm wrong on this, don't say, oh, Phil lied about this. I don't know. I'm just telling you from what I saw transpire publicly. 
if this is happening as I'm understanding it, he literally, he literally made no money on my documentary and only made 200,000 views worth of money after the fact, meaning it's one of his worst performing videos of all time, and it has nothing to do with him. It has 100% to do with YouTube's awful algorithm and content ID system. That's fucked up, right? So anyway, the point I'm making here is that's the kind of person that he probably got hurt bad by that, which is why, incidentally, if you haven't noticed, he's uploading a lot more videos now. He just uploaded a Lily Orchard documentary. He then dropped a Dr. Disrespect documentary, and supposedly he's dropping another video within the next couple of weeks, which he never uploads that fast. But it sounds like he needs to because he has to get views now to make up for the fact that he lost all this money on my documentary. You see? So, that's what I mean. When you are beholden to the YouTube algorithm and this shit, you could get screwed. And thankfully for me, I'm not. I'm not beholden to anything on YouTube when it comes to that. Even if my views go down, it doesn't necessarily affect me that badly. Yeah, I might take a small hit because ad revenue I do make money on, but it's not like, oh, you know, uh, really annoying that I lost some views and I lost a little bit of income this month. But hey, as long as my streams are going well, it doesn't really matter. So thank you guys for your support, right? And you're hanging out and supporting my streams every single day. Because that's why I'm able to sit here and be like, I'm not worried. I'm literally not worried. I'm good, right? Davian says, with the amount of people on YouTube, would you lose money if, huh? Would YouTube lose money if they paid ad avenue rate? Eh? I don't understand what you just said, Hands. You'd have to clarify what you're talking about. Sarah says, he seemed more upset he didn't get the scoop with the WWE Champions thing. <laughs> he didn't. Listen, he was he was basically thinking that we were going to do an interview after the documentary, and in the interview, I was going to fess up to WWE champions, but I already did before, right? <laughs> but it is what it is. Like, that was always my plan. I knew that eventually someone with some kind of stature, not my detractors, not some shitbag making a hate video where they over-exaggerate, but someone was going to make a reputable documentary that was going to cover the whole situation, and it made sense that that would be the time for me to tell the truth about the whole situation. Why would I just do it for some random asshole detractor, right? So, <clears throat> anyway, there you go. But anyway, yeah, it got, really sucks. It really sucks that that happened to him. I'm just happy that even though overall, for some reason, my viewership is down right now on demand on YouTube, it's not going to kill me. As long as the stream momentum keeps going, we're good, okay? <clears throat> Okay, now I understand what Dab Hands is saying. He says, YouTube used to pay more for ad revenue. Did they lower the rate because of the amount of people uploading now to save money? No. They had to lower the rate because they lost advertisers because they're idiots and they ran the site horribly. They were running algorithms that were basically erroneous and not working properly. They were putting ads on videos that would not pay. So for example, you're watching someone play Minecraft and a, a fucking life insurance ad would pop up. Wow, that's pertinent. You're really going to pay off for that, aren't you? Like, you're really making money on that ad if you're an advertiser and you're paying to have your, your product advertised. That's really what you need, right? They were running ads on people whose videos were like terrorist videos saying death to a certain group. <laughs> there was an ad for Starbucks on it, you know? So because that was happening, advertisers in 2017 gathered together. Walmart, Starbucks, um, a bunch of fast food. And they all said collectively, from our data that we're researching, we're not getting any return on investment for advertising on YouTube because YouTube's algorithms don't work. These is a bunch of nerds who sat there and wrote code but never tested it. They sold us the code. We believed them that this was going to be effective advertising. We're paying millions and millions of dollars for these ad campaigns, and it's not effective advertising. No, we're not making anything out of it. So they all pulled. They all pulled their ads off of YouTube. And when they did, that was the adpocalypse where... Ad revenue overnight went from up here to way the hell down here. And so no one can make a living just on ads on YouTube anymore. Everyone had to become a live streamer. Everyone had to get sponsorships and partnerships and do product placements. There was no way to make money on ads anymore. 
So there you go, right? <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, um, that, that's what happened. It has nothing to do with YouTube decided to lower their ad payout. No, they just lost advertisers. They did. They absolutely lost advertisers who they absolutely needed, essentially, to keep the site afloat and make it so you can make a living with on-demand videos. So that's why you see so many content creators who had to change their formula recently. They couldn't, they literally couldn't survive doing the way they used to do. They had to change up everything they were doing. <clears throat> okay. All right, so we've covered a lot of topics here today, right? A good amount of topics. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to roll into the next one. All righty, everybody. So our next topic for today is I want to watch the official launch trailer for Dragon Age The Veil Guard with you guys. Now, to give you guys some perspective, okay? I originally played Dragon Age 2, <clears throat> excuse me, back in the day when it was a brand new release. It was a lengthy RPG playthrough that I did for YouTube. <clears throat> this was even before the era of me being an interactive live streamer. I think it went well, and I did like the game. But then people urged me to play the original. So I went back and I played Dragon Age Origins. Now, that was a messy playthrough because that game originally was really designed to be PC-centric. And they did port it to console, but it definitely doesn't play well as a console game. It has a lot of issues <clears throat> where they kind of try to turn it into an action game, and it doesn't really work that well. That was where the infamous I hate skeletons meme came from way, way, way back in the day. Um, so there you go. Uh, but <clears throat> in regards to the series, years later, Dragon Age Inquisition came out as a brand new release. And at that point, I was a live streamer. And I was very excited to check it out. Now, a lot of people did not like Dragon Age Inquisition, citing that the game had been way dumbed down, that the themes were changed a little bit. Personally, I really liked it. I thought it was an exceptionally good game to the point where I got so immersed and really enjoyed it so much, it became my game of the year. But that was nine years ago, right? <clears throat> nine freaking years ago. Today, we're nine years removed from any Dragon Age content. So the question is, does anyone even care about the series anymore, right? After that insane wait, where the, sadly the company went and went and made Mass Effect the Andromeda that sucked ass. And then they went and made, uh, what the hell was the name of the game that they made that flopped? I can't even remember what it's called anymore because it doesn't even exist, right? It was the, the you know, the, the co-op shooter or whatever it was. I can't really remember what it was because they were instructed to make that even though they didn't want to. Bioware was forced to make a shitty game. So now they're finally back with Veilguard. But everyone seems to be really torn about this game. Some people are like, yeah, this looks good. And others are like, wow, this game is a piece of dog shit. It looks like it's full of modern, you know, DEI stuff and the themes are ruined and it doesn't look or feel like Dragon Age anymore. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's watch the final trailer for Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Let's have a discussion live right here on stream. And let's figure out if this is a game that I want to play or not. All right? Today, I literally want to make the decision. Am I going to be playing Dragon Age the Veil Guard or are we skipping it? Okay? All right, let's figure this out. Let's do it live. Do it live, live on the podcast. Here we go. Ready? Here's the volume. Okay, ready? Here we go. It's too fucking loud. Hold on. Why is it so goddamn loud? Events are weaving together quickly. The fate of the world shall be decided soon. From electronic so farts. Come out of the fade. To ancient elven gods. They were horrific tyrants. The worst is still coming. Unless we stop them. Artifacts that have been dormant for centuries are awakening. This is... Okay, I gotta say something about these plots that make no fucking sense, okay? There's a game in a series, and in the game, here's the plot, here's the big bad, here's everything that's so hyper important. And so through an epic 40, 50, 60 hour journey, you overcome 
the all the odds you beat the big bad game over. All right. Then the next game comes out, right? And the next game is, oh, by the way, there was this other threat that was always there behind the scenes that we never even fucking mentioned whatsoever in any of the previous games of the series. And that was the overreaching threat worse than what you faced in the last one, even though we told you in the last one that was the end-all be-all. And this now is the priority. It's like, wait, what? So, for example, we played three Dragon Age games, correct? In any of those three games, did they ever mention that there were big, bad, elven gods in the Vale that at any moment could open up and invade the planet? Did they ever mention that? Do you remember that? Like, I remember in the Dragon Age games, sometimes you're going into the Vale and out of the Vale, and there's stuff involved. Do you ever remember that, they, oh, yeah, two giant gods could destroy? No. They just made it up out of nowhere. They're like, oh, now this is the big thing. That's what gets me. Like, for example, with a game that they just did this recently that it was a pet peeve of mine was Zelda. So you had Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh, my God. Ganondorf's evil corruption is going over the land and taking everything over, and you got to stop it, right? So you fight these giant fights on these giant moving creatures that are actually dungeons, and you have to summon the power of the four legendary heroes to defeat Ganon, and you beat him, and then the next game comes out, Tears of the Kingdom, none of that mattered, it didn't, that was nothing, that you were fucking around, because now the real big bad, the real Ganon is here, and now you got to fight him, and it's completely different, like, wait, what? If, if the real Ganon was there, why didn't you just go fucking fight him to begin with? Why did we waste time? <laughs> right? There's a whole game that was wasted then, right? So let's, re let's retcon that whole game and pretend like Tears of the Kingdom is the real threat. Like, no, 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 no. It's the same thing here. Like, we had three different Dragon Age games, right? In Inquisition, it was about this, you know, demon coming out and you have to stop this from happening. But now in the next one, there's two... Elven gods now that are coming out of the veil. Like, what, 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 where was that in the plot before now? It's actually a pet peeve of mine that when they, they we're just going to retcon all the important stuff we taught you about the world building and all this shit from previous. Just write that off like it never happened. Now we have a new plot for you. Well, no, fuck you. I played three other games that never mentioned any of this before. Why should I care about it now all of a sudden? Right? This is so dumb. Okay. Shut it down. I'm trying. Dead stir more easily than they should. There, it's been feeding on the blight. The streets of Treviso get more dangerous by the day. Unari, the gods, I can feel their corruption. Cults gathering power. Darkspawn are charging to Weishaupt. You're the only force that can stop this. But not if they burn your castle to the ground. Get down! The other funny part is the whole trailer is cinematic like 23 frames per second like it's a movie. It's not a movie. It's a game. So why are they presenting it as if it's some kind of a movie? Gamers don't fall for this anymore, right? You see this trailer, you're like, this is not representative of anything that will actually be in the game, correct? This is just, it's a teaser for the plot, but this is not what the game will be like at all. And people know that now. We're not stupid. You know, this isn't not, you know, 2004 E3, right? So, honestly, I, I'm watching this trailer. I have no fucking clue what the game will be yet. I just, I, there's no way I would even know. It will not be easy, but you are this world's only hope. I believe in all of us. And also, isn't it weird because didn't they say for the longest time that the guy who was your ally in Dragon Age Inquisition was going to be the big bad of this, but now he's not anymore. He's in it, right? I forget his name. He's the he's the the elven magician who now I guess he's a god. It was revealed that he was a god in one of the DLCs and he was a villain all along. 
Stolas, yeah. He was supposed to be the big bad of this all along. And then somewhere along production and development, they changed the plot. So now it's two other elven gods that are the big bads, and I guess Solus is going to try to stop them. He'll like he's bad, but he's teaming up with you because it's like the greater good versus the greater evil or something like that, right? So that's just funny to me. Like I watch this, I'm like, okay. So we watched a movie, and all it tells us is that there's a new big bad we need to stop. That's literally it, right? Now you know what's funny? <clears throat> Darziak just said. You should watch the Dragon Age Origins launch trailer. Sacred Ashes trailer, is this it? No, that's 11 years. Well, it is from the Dragon Age channel, though. Yeah, they had a lot of trailers. I guess this is it. Dragon Age Origins Sacred Ashes Cinematic Official. <clears throat> From Electronic Arts France. Is it in French? Hopefully it's not in French. The legend says the tomb sits atop this peak. All right. Just ignore the French subtitles. Okay. We're going to compare these two. <sighs> Lovely. We can freeze to death while digging for the bones of a madwoman. This is very Lord of the Rings-esque, is it not? This looks like, you know, this is the Fellowship traveling together across the mountaintops while... Uh, well, what's his name? Um, uh, not, not Sauron, but the other guy. Saruman is, is doing his chant and is trying to knock them off with the weather. That's what this reminds me of. Oh. Fighters ever, they run right into the weapons. This looks like Lord of the Rings to me. Does it not? It looks like this is what they were going for. They were going for like a Lord of the Rings fantasy vibe. Right? This does it. Does this, what we're watching right now, 15 years ago, the cinematic trailer for Dragon Age Origins, does this look like what we just watched? Does, would you even think it's the same series? Right? The righteous stand before the darkness, and the Maker shall guide their hand. I mean, admittedly, this is very, very cinematic, right? This also is not representative of how the game played, but at least you're getting a vibe for what it is. <laughs> You also got to remember, this game actually came out before Skyrim, right? 
So this was before the era of, oh, dragons aren't a big deal. To have like a big dragon in a video game was a big deal at this point, right? Hadouken. Two thousand nine, fifteen years ago, right? So take a look at that versus what we just watched with Veilguard, right? Like, Veilgar just looks like the most watered-down, generic, wishy-washy, not-determined game, correct? This game looks like, well, here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to make a hard Lord of the Rings fantasy adventure, <clears throat> right? We want to show you that there's going to be archetypes. We want to show you that there's going to be epic fights, big dragons. Watching... The Veilguard trailer, what did you see? Ooh, a big spooky skeleton, right? A bunch of generic guys that are now the new big bads, even though they look generic like every other character. I'm not saying there wasn't generic stuff in that trailer we just watched, but like one gives you a big identity. Like you know when you watch that Dragon Age Origins trailer, you know what to expect when you play the game. <clears throat> Watching that Dragon Age Veilguard trailer, I have no fucking clue what the game is at this point. I don't. Is it going to be more serious? role-playing with fantasy archetypes? Is it going to be Guardians of the Galaxy all over again, right? Like, what is it going to be? I have no fucking clue. And I'll be honest, the art style of Veilguard doesn't help it. You see this art style, right? Right? It's like, again, it's very Lord of the Rings-esque art style with the characters, correct? Then you go back to that Veilguard trailer we just watched. It's been feeding on the blight. Right? And it's like, take a look at this still. That the It looks it looked like is it is it World of Warcraft? Or is it Overwatch? Is it fantasy? I can't tell what it is. It seems to to not have a unique identity. I can't tell what this is when I'm looking at it. It just looks generic. It's like kinda cartoony, but yet not. Like, you can't put your finger on what it is. You know what I mean? I just, uh, I just don't know. Is it going to be more action-based? Is it going to be more serious RPG-based? Is it cartoony? I can't tell. I literally can't tell. If I just watched your trailer, and I have no clue what your game is, I think you've kind of missed the point of the trailer, right? The whole idea is that you need to establish what your game is with its trailer to hook potential purchasers and players. This trailer, this two-minute trailer, did none of that whatsoever. All you told me was, oh, there's a new big bad. Well, yeah, because every game seems to do this now. It completely wants you to, they want you to do the Men in Black memory flash on the last three games you played in the series. None of that mattered. Here's the new plot. Two new big bads are coming out of the veil, and we've got to stop it. Okay, super generic, got it. Forget everything we know about the series up to now because you basically took too long to make this game, so you're trying to restart it, right? You're trying to hit the reset button. But the trailer should at least establish to me what the game is going to be. I, it doesn't. Like, to me, I don't know. Like, here's the deal. We just came off of Baldur's Gate 3, right? Arguably. One of the biggest and best RPGs of all time. Insane seller. People are still talking about and playing it a year later. It's still on every, in everyone's minds, right? They need, if they're going to come out of retirement here, nine years in development, they need to hit hard with this game. And I'm just not seeing it. At all. To me, this is looking like 
uh, you know, not identifiable slot, you know, and I'm nervous about it. Like, I, I still don't know if I should play it. I literally don't know. And I liked the th other three games and I still don't know if I should play it or not. I'm lost. I, you know, I got mixed feelings about it. I don't even know if anyone is going to watch me play this if I try to play it, right? Or if I'm going to play two streams of it and everyone's going to say this game sucks ass, you know? I mean, I'm being asked to watch a gameplay trailer of it. Um, let me find, let me go to the channel. What the fuck is this? Why are there 42 minute videos? I'm not watching that. Mage build deep dive. Should we do that? You know, if you're a major AAA game studio and you're releasing a series of videos that are 40 minutes long and you're only getting like 30,000 views, I think you're fucked. I'm just saying, I think you're fucked. That guy looks like Vincent Price, by the way. Does he not? That looks just like Vincent Price. Reveal trailer that we saw that already. Gameplay reveal, we saw that. Uh, you want to do a deep dive? Here, four minute mage deep dive. Here we go. I'm Hillary Heidi, a producer at BioWare. Let's take a closer look at the mage build we featured at the recent State of Play. If you haven't yet, check out our other progression videos for a deeper intro to the gameplay systems. I call this build the Dragon Killer because my gear and skills have been optimized. Why is the frame rate in your build video so poor? It's less than 30 frames. To take on it is, look. Boss. If, okay, if you're going to showcase your game, make it look good. Why, did you, why are you using a build of the game that runs it to like 25 frames per second that's not showcasing your game very well? This Ice Dragon. As a mage, I can switch between two weapon sets, a staff for ranged attacks, or an elemental orb and dagger for close quarters combat. I'm facing off against an ice dragon, which is vulnerable to fire, so I've equipped Urthemiel's Ash as my elemental orb. It reduces enemy damage, makes burning last longer and do more damage, and increases the cap on burning stacks. My dagger, Thorn of Misfortune gives me access to the physical damage type and synergizes with my affliction-based build, increasing the damage of arcane bombs, which I build up with repeated orb attacks. I've further powered up my afflictions by equipping this death mask, which will give me a nice damage boost. You'll notice my armor set looks a bit different than the icon. That's because I'm making use of the game's transmog system to set my appearance to this Tevinter Mage robe I purchased in Docktown. Let's switch over to my character's skill tree, where I further okay. enhanced my ability to take- I am understanding everything she's saying. If you, if you don't understand what she just said, basically you can make any piece of gear look like any other piece of gear. So even though you might have heavy armor on, but you have a badass piece of light armor, you can make it look like the piece of light armor. You can customize the appearance of your character. That's a good feature. Take on this ice dragon. Elemental Catalyst gives my abilities plus 15% bonus damage. In this case, fire damage, since both my staff and orb are fire-based. Inner Focus generates 25% extra mana. So all she's doing is she's going through the build. She's showing you this is the mage build I created. Okay, but what, now let's see the combat. Okay, here we go. This is what I want to see how Wide it's going to Wide radius. Play. Perfect against a large target like a dragon. Okay. Let's return to our battle with the ice dragon to talk about Dude, it's dude, it's killing me. You're showing the game at like 25 frames per second. Maybe it's because they know on console it's gonna run like shit. What do you think? You think that's why they're showcasing it like this? Because you know on PC it's gonna run good. So maybe what it is is they know it looks like shit on console. So let's just show you how it looks like shit. So people aren't expecting better than this or something, right? About synergies and combos. Here I've got the dragon staggered. This is my opportunity to deal as much damage as possible while it's down. Detonations are a great way to do this. A detonation can be set up with Lucanus's Debilitate ability, which applies the Sundered status, followed by Rook's Dark Squall, which detonates okay. Sundered targets. Okay. So 
giant explosion. I'll follow this up with yep. Tasha's fire breath to apply burning damage. Normally, I'd have to wait for my companions to cool down before I could use their abilities for another combo. But I've got a secret weapon at my sleeve, the Dreadwolf Solarium Dagger. My dagger is equipped with three runes. I'll toggle to the regroup rune and activate it, instantly refreshing my companion cooldowns. With my companion's double, full suite of abilities punish. available, let's finish this thing. I'll once again use Lucanus' debilitate to set up a detonation, and this time I'll trigger it with my meteor attack, all while Tasha's fire breath keeps the dragon burning. And I'll finish the job with my powerful ultimate ability, Thunderous End. But it didn't kill him. <laughs> She's like, I'll finish the fight now. And then it doesn't finish the fight. So I get it. It didn't really show that much though, right? Like I understand what she's saying. So you're going to be ranged. You're going to be using elemental attacks and weaknesses. You're going to be using combo attacks. The combo attacks kind of remind me of like Mass Effect. Remember in Mass Effect, you could do one person would hit them with the biotic and the other person would shoot. It was like exploding a big area of effect, effect you know, on them or something. That's what that's uh how I remember in the Mass Effect double team attacks. Yeah. Mass Effect 2 particularly, I think they were a huge part of the gameplay. That's what it looks like. It looks like they've applied that combo engine from Mass Effect to the combat of Dragon Age, right? But it's definitely more uh action based now. I mean, yes, there's cooldowns that you have to use, but it definitely looks more action based to me. So I don't know. Like again, even just watching that. Is that does that sell you on the game? I don't know. I here's my problem, all right? And you guys can disagree. When you are nine years, nine years removed from a game, right? You need the new game that's coming out to blow you away. You want to be reimmersed in that lore. You want to be sucked right back into that universe. And I'm just going to be honest. I just don't think this game is doing that, right? Everything that I've seen doesn't remind me of anything that we've done in the previous Dragon Age games, right? There's no even, it doesn't even have like a callback besides what's his name with his bow. There's not even like a callback to the previous games. Um, the plot's been rebooted. It was supposed to be Solus who was going to be the villain. Nope, he's not anymore. We forgot about that. That's completely changed now. So all the buildup you had for that is gone, fizzled out. Just a kind of a more generic plot. Oh no, the veil's opening and gods are coming out with enemies. You have to stop them, right? The gameplay itself doesn't look original. It looks like more action-based, combo-based RPG gameplay with cooldowns, right? What I feel like it'll be is, you know, the fight commences... And each one of your characters has an archetype so that based on how you've programmed them to attack or not, they'll do their attacks. And then you'll combo attack and look, you know, use weaknesses and things like that. But I, I feel like this is the kind of game, it's going to get boring right away. And the thing it's going to need is a good solid plot to hook you. Will it have that? If it has a good plot, then maybe it works. But what they've shown you in the plot doesn't seem very unique to me, right? Dragon Age Origins, oh my God, it's like, Lord of the Rings come to life in this epic big adventure. Dragon Age 2. There's the whole choose your side. If you want to be on this side or that side of the argument, it changes the outcome of the game. Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh my goodness. Open world. Recruit whoever you want. Play it however you want. This and that. You know, every game had a hook. This game, What's the hook of Dragon Age Veilguard? Oh, we're back after nine years. That's the hook. Is that enough of a hook? And the thing is, a lot of the people who I think they're trying to hook, it's, it's missing the mark. Have you heard any long time dragon age fans be like wow i'm so excited for this it seems like it's the opposite right does it not it seems like it's like nah if i like the old dragon age games this ain't doing it for me it seems like they're trying to appeal to a more modernized audience and you can tell from the way that the graphics have changed the combat is dumbed down even further right and let's be honest there was that one trailer that made the game look like it was guardians of the galaxy and i think that shot them in the foot I think what they needed was a much more serious situation, and they kind of blew it, in my opinion. I feel like they, they actually should have tried to be maybe more, more similar to the previous stuff, because making it less serious like they have here, 
and make it more cartoony and appeal to the wide audience. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm just being real here, you know. But, hey, you guys can agree or disagree. But to me, that doesn't look like it's, it's, it's convincing me. You know what I mean? Uh, but I here's the thing. I liked Dragon Age Inquisition. So if this is like Dragon Age Inquisition, maybe I would like it. I, don't, I really don't know what to do. You want to know what the key factor here, here is? It releases on Halloween. Why would you have an epic, huge RPG release on Halloween? I, I don't get it. Like, I tell you right now, I'm not playing it on Halloween. Even if I choose to play this game, I'm not playing it on Halloween. I'm not stupid. Halloween is for horror games and horror events, right? So I guess we'll see after my Halloween event ends. Is this a game that you guys want to see me play or not? Like, I'm still on the fence about it. I'm still like, not definitely no, but not definitely yes. I'm just kind of like, oh, I don't know. And that's frustrating to me because obviously I would like to be able to tell you exactly what I'm planning on doing. And right now, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm kind of confused on if this is a game that I, I should be playing or not. Alrighty, everybody. So, to wind down here for the last 10, 15 minutes of the show, what I'd like to do is open up the show to Q&A and, uh, and see what people want to talk about this morning. Now, we've only got $9 in contributions this morning. Nine bucks. Obviously, guys, at 33 straight streams of the goals hit, we, want it, we don't want it to fizzle out on the day before the reward, right? And we know we're going to hit the goal tomorrow because of Call of Duty. Let's get some support going. Whether, again, it be Super Chat, Super Stickers, a tip. We don't have more than uh, no tips this morning. Zero. And let's get it, you know, more than one gifted sub. Let's get the momentum moving if we can, okay? Cool. And let's see what you guys want to talk about. What kind of booze am I thinking about for the Halloween marathon stream? Uh... Well, I don't know. I got to think about it. Like, what should I get? Should I get some hard liquor to take shots? Should I get something that I should sip on all day? I don't know. What do you guys think I should do for the Halloween marathon? Some people are, are, are saying that there, there was a second gifted sub that I missed. I wonder. Let me check. Hold on. The only way to confirm that would be to look at the revenue page. No, it says there's just the one. Oh, wait, there was. There was another one from Rare Tricks, right? So there were two. There was an anonymous and there was a Rare Tricks. Okay, thank you to Rare Tricks for the one gifted membership. I will now, I'll put you on the leaderboard since you're not anonymous. Thank you, Rare Tricks. So, so far, we have two gifted subs over on Kick this morning. Thank you. And thanks for telling me, guys. I missed it. I must have been watching the trailer. Cool. Subs only pop up on Kick when they happen. Then they go away. I, there's no leaderboard to track Kick. Like, on YouTube or on Twitch, you can have leaderboards that track the data. There's no service that seems to track kick. So I have nothing to look at to see what contributions have come in if I miss them live. But there is a there is a behind the scenes like uh like revenue leaderboard that you can click on and after a few minutes then stuff shows up there. So that's what I've been using. Good morning, no sleep real vibes. Sarah says you're on track to skip every RPG release this year. Yeah, because they didn't work. What do you want me to say? I'm an RPG guy. I love RPGs. And all the RPGs I've attempted, they don't work, right? Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, everyone hated it. Even though I loved it, everyone hated it, right? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, man, that game sucks. Stop playing it, right? Don't play Persona. Dragon Age, uh, or not Dragon Age, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, man, that game's terrible, right? And then, you know, I just tried Metaphor. I loved it. 12 hours of Metaphor, loving the game. This game's terrible. Can't even get 200 viewers for it. 40 bucks of support. Drop this game. Oh my god, man. Syndicator, I get that. Syndicator says, FYI, Dead by Daylight has no cross progression, so you're starting over. That's fine. I don't even know what I had ever done on Xbox. It's it's perfectly fine to start over tonight. That's okay. No big deal. Which McFlurry is better, Oreo or m and I would say Oreo. I would think the Oreo McFlurry would taste better to me. I like M&M's, but I don't know about in a McFlurry. Mm. 
No, there's no penalties if I fail to achieve a bounty. The whole idea is you challenge me to do something in Call of Duty. Like, let's say it is, all right, you can only use the pistol and you have to get 15 kills. If you get 15 pistol kills, this next game will reward you with a gifted sub, right? Great. Now I have incentive to do it. If I don't hit it, you don't fucking punish. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. This is not the whipping boy stream. You want to see people get punished? Go watch Lal Cow Live, where they get buried alive and they slap each other around and they do fucked up stunts. I mean, that's their shtick and that's fine. That's the clown shit you want to watch. Go watch it. <laughs> Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <clears throat> okay. Dick Jones has gifted five memberships over on YouTube. Thank you, Dick Jones, for the five gifted memberships. One, two, three. Yeah, cool. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start counting memberships on YouTube. Yeah, I am. They're four bucks. A membership on YouTube is $3.99, correct? So I'm going to start counting that. Because I think it makes sense. The only thing I won't count is if we start seeing people drop 50 member bombs and shit. Because I know that's fake. But I'm going to start counting the memberships on YouTube because it makes sense. It's the only thing we're not counting right now. And it's messed up because I'm getting no memberships now. Like, no lie. I'm getting no memberships on the channel whatsoever. I'm still getting super chats, but I'm getting, like, no memberships because we're not counting that towards the daily goals. So I feel like that's stupid. I feel like we need to start counting it. Or else I'm going to lose all of my memberships on YouTube. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start counting it, all right? So, a YouTube membership is four bucks. Now, I only get two-thirds of that, right? So, I get three bucks. So, every YouTube membership, we're going to count as three dollars, okay? So, that was five. So, we're going to count that as 15. And we're going to say we're up to $29 in support tonight. There you go. And Hidalgo just became a member. So that's another three bucks. That counted as a new one. So now we're at 32 bucks of support today. Thank you, Hidalgo. Did they? I'm being told they closed the loophole. I don't know if I believe that, though. I haven't seen any evidence that they closed the loophole. At all. What is my favorite hard liquor? I don't really have one. I don't really have a favorite hard liquor. I like, there's all different ones that I like. I like whiskey. I like vodka. I like tequila. I like gin. I like different ones. So that's how we're going to do it. From now on, all right, here's what we're doing. Super chats, super stickers count. YouTube memberships count $3 membership because they're, they're four, but YouTube takes like a buck. So it's about $3 membership. Okay. Tips, they count and anyone can do a tip anywhere. Subs, gifted subs over on kick count and they count for five bucks a pop because I get almost all of it. So that's how it works. And that's how we're going to tally up our support for the streams. Okay. So now everything literally counts. Everything counts. There you go. I could get a whiskey. Yeah, I could get a whiskey. I haven't had whiskey in a very long time. Why would you ask me about the difference between a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver? It, it, it's the two basic kinds of screwdriver. If you don't understand, maybe you should look it up yourself. Why would you ask a random streamer that question? I'm not liking a quiet place so far. It's good. It's not the best I've ever played. It's not groundbreaking, but it's also not terrible. I'd argue it's pretty entertaining for a $30 game. I'm enjoying it. So there you go. Bone Killer says, I remember on Twitch you played Call of Duty. You did a point system if you did the goal. I don't know what you mean. If you're talking about the penne points, yeah, we can't do penne points. That's, that doesn't exist on YouTube or on Kick. Um, there is a bot that I might be able to use on Kick. I think it's called Kickbot, but I haven't figured it out or had time to really look into it yet, but I might eventually.
Someone tipped a dollar forty-two and says, "I'm looking forward to Call of Duty tomorrow." And memberships on YouTube should only count as two dollars because of taxes. Nah, we'll do three. We'll count it as three. It's four dollars, and I think I think I keep something like 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 at least two thirds of it. I want to say it's better than you than uh Twitch. Twitch is the worst. Twitch keeps half. But I think I keep like a three bucks or something like that. So that's what we'll say. All right. So our first tip of the day is a dollar forty-two anonymous tip that gets us up to thirty-three dollars in or thirty-three dollars in support so far. Thank you guys. You guys think that uh that I should get a whiskey? For Halloween, what should I get? What do you guys think? What should I have for Halloween? Because I got to get it, whatever I'm going to get. I got to get to uh, Saturday. Yeah, that's true. I got to get it on Saturday on my day off. So I'm going to have to buy some liquor on Saturday. We got to figure out what to get. Whale tail gin again? <laughs> the, the whale tail gin was all right. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't terrible. It was all right. A single malt scotch. I've never had scotch before. Or brandy, actually, either. I've only had, like, regular whiskey. I've never had a scotch or a brandy or any of this kind of stuff. Only whiskey. Scotch and brandy are kind of acquired tastes. Is that true? See, I never had them, so I don't know what they're like. Scotch hits just right, I'm being told. Absinthe is peak Halloween liquor. Yeah, but isn't it true that the absinthe you buy at like a liquor store isn't real absinthe? That the whole idea of original absinthe was that it was supposed to like you up really bad so they don't sell it anymore. Now they have this like pussified absinthe that's not the original product or, or recipe. Make it festive like a spiked cider. Oh, I could do that too. All right, someone tipped a dollar forty. So the one thing I like about modern games, or one thing about modern games that makes me laugh is folks who say they don't like politics in the games. But look at previous games like Fallout New Vegas or Bioshock or Deus Ex or Metal Gear. Makes me scratch my head trying to have discourse online sometimes. Yeah, I, I guess I guess here's for me, the games you just mentioned. Okay, to me those games do have politics in them, but when I think, for example, Deus Ex, right? Or if I think Bioshock, I'm thinking this is the realm of extreme fantasy. You know that those political situations are fantasy situations. It's not like they're trying to superimpose real-life politics on the game and shove it down your throat in some kind of a narrative that pushes one of the sides of the argument, right? When you're playing some modern games, I feel like they are absolutely doing that. I mean, dude, the worst game that I can think of that I've played is Life is Strange 2, where the, the main characters are a pair of Hispanic brothers, and literally every fucking white person they run into in the game is racist against them because they're Hispanic. Like, they're, every fucking white person is a villain in a row. I think there's one guy that's not. The rest of the game, everyone's a villain. And it's like, dude, that's not reality of America. You're pushing a fucking narrative that's insane. And someone who doesn't know that is going to look at this and think that Americans are like villains and shit, right? And the thing is, that's supposed to be a game that, yes, of course, the brothers having these powers is fake, but it's outside of that supposed to be representative of America, like a real America. So that's the kind of shit that pisses me off. I don't mind having politics in a game as long as the politics are tied to a fantasy world and a fantasy universe and it doesn't try to push some kind of an untrue narrative down your throat. You're like, dude, I'm just trying to escape reality by playing your game. The last thing I need is for you to remind me about this fucked up shit again, right? It's just like, come on. <clears throat> Sarah did a $2 super chat and says, will you watch or review the Yakuza TV show? Yeah, it just released, I think, today. It's either today or tomorrow it's releasing, correct? Um, man, here's the thing. I might, but... I'm watching Halloween stuff right now. I'm really liking it. Last night, I watched uh, VHS 85, which is, again, this VHS video series, a horror anthology series. And it's done really well, 
you know it is it's done really well where it's just like various different stories that are disconnected but they're supposed to be from different time periods different kinds of horror you know i've seen in these stories i've seen zombie stories zombie uh stories about mad scientists turning people into killer cyborgs ghost stories uh tales of the supernatural and other dimensions um immortality stories like it's wild because i like the idea of anthology you know i'm really liking it so i'm trying i'm getting through these now and the other night i watched late night with the devil that was really good that was a really well done horror movie i'm getting i'm finally getting into the halloween vibe for this last week of halloween like oh this is good i'm watching horror stuff like every night this is exciting now i don't know if i want to interrupt that to watch yakuza right it's kind of a weird timing that they're releasing it this month but i kind of like i am interested in it i do want to watch it but I kind of want to keep watching horror stuff right now. Oh, let's see here. Here you go. Ansu Kamaru says, I like how Metaphor is handling it. Everything's self-contained in its own world, and it doesn't feel... Uh, it doesn't feel like uh, they're trying to superimpose real-life politics on top of you. Right? There you go. All right, someone took the dollar and says, you're missing out on the New York steamer from Firehouse Subs. Corned beef and pastrami is absolutely delicious. All right, I've never had that. The Firehouse steamer? No, I saw Trick or Treat from 2007. I saw that 100 years ago. The, the New York steamer. There it is. The New York steamer. Corned beef brisket and pastrami with melted provolone, deli mustard, mayo, and Italian dressing. Jeez. It's a ton of meat and a ton of dressing. No veggies? Hopefully you can put some veggies on there or something. <laughs> no, I'm not going to play Mech Warrior 5. I'm not interested. Yes, I do th feel that people... Uh, do things such as watching streams to escape reality as well. I do believe that. That's why, like I've said, some of these, these streams recently from these people who are, you know, exposing their private lives. Freaking review tech. Oh, my God. It's like, dude, do you not understand people are tuning into your stream to have a good time? They don't want to just see the, the, the sob fest about all this private shit going on in your life. Like, right? Now, here we go. Someone's trying to be political. Oh, why are you trying to be political? Someone named Detractors Are Sad did a $5 super chat and says, Prior to the civil rights movement in America, it was much scarier for minorities. Racism hits people in different ways through games. I understand what you're saying, but to have a game that's supposed to be set in the modern day, like Life is Strange 2, and literally the theme of the game is everyone who's white is racist, is fucking stupid. In fact, it's borderline harmful you're going to have some people who play the game and believe that shit. And it's not true. It's just not. Are there scumbags? Yes, there are. Are there racist bigots? Yes, there are. Is that every single white person? Fuck no. That ain't right to make a big generalization like that. Well, let's see. What's up, Game Boy? How are you today? Welcome. All right. It seems like the topics are kind of dying down at this point. <clears throat> and uh, I appreciate you all hanging out with me. That, see, that was a much different kind of podcast again. We talked about some topics to updates, but then we did the whole Dragon Age thing. So that was entertaining. I had a good time. I hope that you guys did too. And uh, now we got to decide. We have one week to think about Dragon Age or not. Yay or nay. Because I'll be honest, I don't know how Dragon Age is going to work if Metaphor didn't. You know, I played Metaphor for 12 hours and I couldn't even retain 200 viewers and get more than like 40 bucks in support. So I don't know what to do. I, I would like to play Dragon Age, but I don't see it working. Honestly, I don't. I feel like I would play it, and again, it would be for, like, 
a hundred people, <laughs> and it would be dead within like a week. So maybe I don't. I don't know. Let's let's think about it seriously over the next week and try to figure this out. I feel like we need to come to determinations on many things. We got to figure out how we're going to do this new long form React show, right? We need to figure out the future of Kick and how often I stream there and things like that. We got to figure out, am I going to play Dragon Age? We got a lot of stuff to think about right now, right? <clears throat> uh. All right. All right, guys, let's end the show before I get too distracted. Let's end the show. Thank you all very much. I'm excited for more Quiet Plays. I'm excited for Dead by Daylight to return tonight. I haven't played that game in so long. So I'm very excited for that to return and see how that goes. Um, and then tomorrow, big new release day. So I'm getting hyped for that. All right, guys. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching the Level 1 Podcast. Tomorrow, I'm sure, for my final streaming day of the week, we'll have a lot to talk about. Thanks for watching. See you Friday.